We are skipping the intro theme. Imagine sub-mediocre pop music juxtaposed with pictures of eagles, Jesus, and all other things religious and linguistic. I think that we evolved from animals. I believe in creation. I don't believe in the story of creation. I do believe in most of the Bible, though. Uh, I believe in creation. No, I see <laughs> Creation. I believe in creation. We look similar to apes. I believe in God. I think it's a mystery. It's not for humans to know. I think that evolution probably is very valid, but I also like to believe in creation. I sort of leaning towards the evolution idea, but it, there's no power in it like there is in the power of God. We are still amazed that creationists would rather harass shoppers at the local mall than gather evidence to support their claims. <laughs> of this program, we're going to put you right here, where I'm sitting, in the juror's box. In other words, welcome to Pretendland. But this time you're going to hear the facts about evolution versus creation. We will be presenting those. Not some media spin, not wishful thinking, not the biased view of a scientific minority. That responsibility lies with Janet Folger and the members of Dwayne Gish's Institute for Creation Research. Who is Janet Folger? She's the author of a few books attempting to further the agenda of the religious right. President of Faith to Action, a group best known for its opposition to the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2007, also known as Matt Shepard's Law. Just a plain old-fashioned expose on the facts. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Check the facts yourself. This is why we happily include all of our references. Does anyone want to take bets on whether Miss Folger will be so obliging? Don't do what most of us do, which is to give in to our natural tendency to act like cattle and just follow the herd. Don't take my word for it, but do me one other favor as well. Stop taking the media, an evolutionist word for it also. You know, when you stop to think about it, it's kind of sad, really, because we've grown so accustomed to just taking the word of any intelligent man in a lab coat with a doctor in front of his name that we've forgotten how to think for ourselves. Remember that last tidbit about the lab coat. And I assure you the facts I'm talking about are easy to prove. In fact, some basic common sense will do it. Science relies on evidence, not intuition. Because the truth is, you've been misled, scammed lied to. You've let the evolutionists make a monkey out of you. That is not a monkey. And now it's time to turn the tables. We swear that we are not out to get you. However, your cousin, that's a different story. He owes us money. A lot of money. I'm going to expose ten outright lies. Ten myths that have been fed to the American public by a very small percentage of people and organizations with an agenda all their own. We have not even finished the introduction, and Miss Folger is playing the evil evolutionist conspiracy card. And sadly, many of the rest of us have followed along blindly. That would be your failing. Seriously, shape up, people. If a creationist can figure out that you're not doing your homework, everyone else knew over a hundred years ago. We've grown up with years and years of being brainwashed. This has become increasingly tedious. We're going to summarize the rest of Miss Folger's introduction so that we can get to her first real argument. Miss Folger claims that evolution is junk science. She accuses you of being mindless chattel, too ignorant to weigh the evidence for yourself. She claims that the Bible is a magical textbook. She further claims it is historically accurate, apparently unaware of the contradicting evidence. This leads to the proclamation that her deity is cranky and causes natural disasters to seek vengeance against, well, everyone. She concludes with a classic threat of violence against the heathen, so all of you watch out. One of the classic myths that the spin doctors have managed to sway popular opinion with over the years is that evolution is somehow a fact of science. After making so many of these videos, it is no longer shocking when creationists are forced to rely on ad hominem attacks. And for the record, Miss Folger issued her attack less than 20 seconds after stating the following. Leave your prejudices, your prejudgments, your preconceived notions behind. Seriously, is anyone shocked by such contradictory actions? Go ahead, raise your hand. You in the back, you can just leave. So, what is a scientific fact? It's any verifiable observation. The fact of evolution is that allelic frequencies present in a population change over time. This observation has been verified. 
many times. They work very hard at creating this image that this intellectual approach to life is waging a noble fight for truth against all those narrow-minded bigots who blindly believe in religion. While we could write a witty retort detailing how Ms. Folger is currently leading opposition against expanding hate crime legislation to protect minorities facing true bigotry, we feel that all of you are more than capable of making that connection. Well, if evolution is a scientific fact, then it might surprise you to hear that a scientist from Pensacola, Florida, Dr. No. Ken Hoven. Remember Ms. Folger's previous comment about lab coats? Well, Mr. Hovind is about as much of a scientist as a rock is an astrophysicist. We apologize to any rocks which may have heard such an insensitive remark. Has a standing offer of $250,000, and I quote, to anyone who can give any, and I emphasize any, empirical evidence for evolution. That's right, you understood that correctly. Since 1990, Dr. Hovind has offered any and all takers the opportunity to provide any scientific proof for evolution. If anyone ever could, he would immediately hand over $250,000. And guess what? Despite newspaper articles and cover stories on National Geographic all about those evolutionary proofs, Dr. Hovind's $250,000 is still safely in his own hands. Rather than doing something productive with his life, Mr. Hovind had a sham contest based on a straw man argument against evolutionary biology. Currently, the federal government is seeking over 500000 in restitution against Mr. Hovind. We would say more, but creation science evangelism would probably throw another temper tantrum and file more false DMCA takedown orders in an attempt to silence us. How can that be? Well, you see, evolution is a theory. So, what is a scientific theory? It's a logically self-contained model or framework for describing a related set of natural phenomena. The theory of evolution unites the many observations that populations change over time into a framework which serves as the foundation for modern biology. Not a scientific fact, as it's generally considered to be. We have already covered the verified observation that allelic frequencies of a population vary over time. And it's often portrayed by many of our school textbooks and in museums. In fact, if you want to be scientifically accurate about it, evolution doesn't even qualify to be a theory. That was completely dishonest. Despite the fact that it's the term most commonly used for it. No, in reality, it's not a theory at all. It's a model. It is always amusing when creationists begin demonstrating a complete lack of understanding of the topic they are attacking. Theories are models. That's because scientific theories have to be observed, tested, and results repeated. In the case of evolutionary biology, this process has been ongoing for nearly 150 years. It has been remarkable how robust this biological theory has been. But evolution has never been observed. No one was there when life first appeared on this planet. That was a rather obtuse straw man argument. Abiogenesis is not evolution. Nor can evolution be tested. To accept this tidbit of nonsense, you are going to need to completely ignore such amazing findings as these haplotype maps. Chemists have never been able to create life from non-living matter. Actually, the Solera Corporation is currently working ever closer to completing a completely synthetic bacterium. And again, abiogenesis is not evolution. And despite the countless millions of species that scientists claim were involved in our past, mysteriously, evolution has never repeated in modern history, or at any other point in recorded history. This is actually a prediction of evolutionary biology. Becoming less adapted to an environmental niche would be rather catastrophic to a population facing competition from others. Ken Ham, a former science teacher who now heads up the organization Answers in Genesis, explains. Hey, you tell us to trust the scientists? The scientists got it wrong. They've changed their theories. But you know what? The word of God hasn't changed. Why didn't you tell us to trust the word of God? Mr. Ham still seems more concerned with preserving religious dogma than examining the evidence. 